All right, now that we have the two pieces ready, we're gonna go ahead and hinge them onto the wing using the strapping tape and the over and under taping method that Paul used on his video when he built his EPP park jet. Um, you're gonna need some strapping tape and we're gonna cut them in the strips uh, just a little more than half inch wide. Um, they don't have to be exact, just somewhere around that width. And basically what you do is you cut the strip in half, flip one side over so the sticky side is facing up and the other one down. And you're going to want to stick them back together with about a quarter inch overlap. And just press them together good so they're stuck. And then we're going to attach them onto the elevrons in threes. One facing up and two facing down. Um, usually I do the outside ones the same way and then I reverse it on the center one so that way you have close to an even amount of strips on the top and the bottom. And this one's already almost complete. I'm just going to attach the last piece. Um, just I usually just eyeball the spacing. It's not real critical but try and get them close to the same. And now you can see on the top I've got four strips and on the bottom I have five strips. And then we're just basically going to weave them under from the top down and from the bottom up and over onto the wing. Um, I'm going to show you an easy way on how to do this since there's so many strips on here. You want to choose the side that you're going to work with first and then the opposite side basically all you need to do is tape them down since the sticky side is on the top you just flip them over bend them over backwards and I try and get a piece of some kind of tape that's not real sticky and just barely attach it onto the very end so that way you can pull it off again later if you tape it on there too much it'll be too hard to get them off and just tape them back do that on all the strips that are going to be on the opposite side so I'm going to do the side with five first so I'm just putting this on the side that has the four just to hold them in place it'll make it a lot easier to attach it to the wing this way and then once you have all four of them taped back now you only have the one side facing up. Um, make sure the wide side of the aileron goes to the outside. And basically these are going to sit on the top side. So you want to line it up on the edge of the wing. And basically we want the top surface of the aileron to be flush with the top edge of the wing. So I usually start with the center one and then work my way to the outside. And it usually works better if you go from one side to the other side. That way it doesn't try to pull up on one end or the other. All right, once you have it attached on this side, you're just basically going to flip the wing over. And then now we can uh, remove the pieces of tape that we added on and pull up as you're strapping this over to put some tension on it. It'll take out all of the play that's in the hinge. Let's do them one at a time, pull them off, pull up on it to put a little tension on it. And just do that on all the remaining pieces. And when you're done, you should have a nice slop free hinge for the elevators or elebrons. All right. 
Now that we have uh, both elevrons mounted onto the wing, we're going to go ahead and uh, install the servos and control rods with the control horns. Um, I've decided to go with the high tech HS 82 MGs or metal geared servos. They're the heavy duty ones. Um, I always just use the Great Plains control horns. Um, I get these at the local hobby shop for like a dollar or something. Um, I'm also going to be using these Dubro um, Super Strength servo arms. I always like using these on these big heavy duty uh, steel geared servos. They just don't break that easy. Okay, for us to get our dimensions for the holes where we're going to insert the servos, um, we need to line the square up with the center line. Um, come from the tip back 13 and a half inches. And then come from here over 7 inches and put a dot. Then we need to square off of the hinge line from the ailerons. Just make sure the square is squared off of this hinge line and line it up with the dot here. And you're going to want to make your squares an inch and a quarter long from this dot up an inch and a quarter. And then square off of that and make it an inch and a half wide. So the square is going to be an inch and a quarter this way and then an inch and a half wide. After you've got the squares drawn onto the foam, go ahead and cut them out with the box cutter. You can cut through the first layer of the fiberglass and through the KF airfoil. Don't try to cut through the bottom piece of the fiberglass. Peel up the foam first. After you've got that out, then take the box cutter again and cut the second layer of uh, fiberglass. You don't need to cut into the foam very deep. Just cut the fiberglass and peel it out. Um, when you go to insert the servo, um, it will be sticking out a little bit taller than the slot. Um, so what I did was I melted away the foam underneath it about an eighth of an inch to get the servo to sit flush with the top of the wing. I found that if you have a hot glue gun and you set it on high, um, it's the right temperature to melt the foam slowly. So you can, once the hot glue gun tip is hot, you can go ahead and use it to melt the foam away and just trial fit it until you get the servo to sit flush. Um, the servo should sit flat in there, even and flush with the top of the wing. Um, basically we're just going to hot glue the servos in. Um, after we've got the servos glued in, then we can go ahead and connect the control rods and the control horns and we'll connect them to the ailerons. Once you have the control horns bolted on, you're going to need to cut off the excess part of the screw. I usually just use a pair of uh, wire cutters and clip them off as close to the base of the control horn as possible. Um, they usually cut off fairly easy. You just got to work at it. Clip them off and it might leave a little burr that you might want to file off with a piece of sandpaper or a file. But you want to cut them off flush with the bottom. One last thing before we glue the servos in. We want to make sure that the control arms are centered, so hook the radio up and turn it on um, just to center the servos and make sure that the control rods aren't on crooked because um, it's a lot easier to do it before we glue them in. Okay, we've got the servos glued in. Um, I put some strapping tape over them to help secure them in there a little bit better. The control rods are hooked up and so are the control horns. Um, just got the radio turned on. We're going to test them make sure they're working. Elevators look fine. And so do the ailerons. Um, this looks like a good point to go ahead and stop the video. Um, we'll be back again soon to finish up phase two of the build. Thanks for watching RC Foam Fighters.